But well, this week I thought it'd be cool to show you uh, kind of an interesting technique I kind of stumbled upon messing around with the smudge tool, and it's a way of achieving a sort of st- st- uh, like a frame by frame motion capture type of thing. It's really kind of interesting. So let's just do it. Why don't I stop explaining it and actually show you? So here I have an image of a runner who's obviously in mid-stride, but I want to have kind of a motion blur to it. And I'm not a traditional motion blur as you might motion blur as you might think. I want to have it kind of stepping as if it's been caught up in, you know, several frames have been exposed and it's just kind of a kind of a motion blur frame by frame type of thing. So what I need to do first actually is select the runner itself. Well, I'm going to use my lasso tool over here in the toolbar. We're going to select the lasso tool. And I'm just going to draw a very loose selection around the runner. I'm not being very precise. I'm not really paying, a, you know, paying too much mind to how close. I am getting as close as I can, but I'm not going to be too bothered if I come inside the area of the runner or even outside too much anyway. So let's just round this area in here. And, of course, I can modify areas of that selection after I've drawn it, which I'm obviously going to need to do like that. So let's go out here. I'm going to hold down my Option key. You'll see a little minus sign pop up there. Let's go ahead and take that area away. And holding down the Shift key, we'll turn it into a little plus sign, which means we can add to that selection. Let's remove that little part there. So once that's all done, I'm going to copy this selected area to its own layer by pressing Command or Control J. There it is in the Layers panel. Then I'm going to load that selection or load that layer as a selection once again by holding down my command or control key, clicking on that layer. Then we are going to define this selection as a brush. Let's go into the edit menu, go to define brush preset. And of course you can give it a name, but you know, I'm too much of a hurry to, to ever give it a name. So with that brush made, let's deselect and let's go in, select our smudge tool. We're not going to use the paintbrush tool, but we're going to use the smudge tool. Once that's selected, let's go into the brush menu here. We're going to find the brush runner right there, which is right there at the very bottom. If I click into my work area, you see that the brush is in the same outline as our selection. It's kind of a preview. It's the exact same size as, as the selection we created. So with the brush selected, let's make sure that we are in more normal mode. The strength is set to 60%. And we're going to go to the brush options here. I want to make sure that all these are checked off. I don't want to have any of these options activated except the only thing I'm going to change is inside the brush tip shape section here, which is right here, I'm going to uncheck spacing. So it will not apply any specified setting for the spacing as I brush. I'll just close that. Now, making sure we're working on that duplicate layer, not on the original layer, but on that duplicate. I'm going to go over here and just click and drag over that runner. And you can see what's happening. It's giving me kind of an interesting, you know, step-by-step blur effect. Not like a normal, if I left spacing checked, it would have given me almost like a smeared look to it. But this is actually giving me almost like a frame-by-frame capture uh, effect type of thing. Now, here's the thing. As you can see, when I clicked and dragged, it's painting it. Now I'm just dragging it at a very slow pace. Now if I click and drag really fast, you can see that it's going to give me some spacing in there. So this is where it's going to require maybe a f- several times of trying this before you get what you're actually looking for. So I'm actually going to try this again, but notice that we're doing it to a runner. Now if we were doing this to a vehicle or something like that, it wouldn't be a problem. We could do a straight blur and it would you know, still work. But obviously when you're running, you kind of have a hop to it. So I'm actually going to click and drag in a wavy direction, almost as if it's kind of going along with the way he's running. It's probably a bit much, so let's kind of... That's probably a bit much, too. So like I said, this will probably take a few times, so I'm just going to go with that for now. For the sake of time, we'll just say that that looks pretty good. Well, I'm going to modify it a little bit more by bringing up the free transform, pressing Command or Control T, then, again, holding down the Control key or simply right-clicking directly on that object. We're going to go up to this little menu and co select warp. And let's zoom out a little bit here. I'm just going to scale this in just to kind of give it a perspective because it's obvious that he's running 
in at, at an angle, almost as if he's running back into the background here, or running from that background area. So we want to kind of have the blur going in that same direction. We'll just hit OK. Now, one last thing I want to do is actually create a layer mask on this layer here. I'm going to use a regular brush, painting with black. Let's get a very soft edge, about a 100 pixel soft edge, painting with black on the layer mask, making sure that the layer mask is active. Not the layer itself, but the layer mask. Let's paint over the area of the runner that's in the current state of time or wherever. Just to reveal a little bit more of that because that blurred version is on top, so we need to just mask some of that area out. So there you kind of get a sense of motion, more of a sense of motion. You know, obviously he was already, this image was captured with him in motion mid-stride there, but this just kind of enhances it a little bit more, kind of giving you an idea of he's moving a lot faster, you know, the way it was shot, it kind of gives it an effect of, you know, just various stages of speed or whatever you want to call it. But here's a good thing. It doesn't always have to work, be applied to a photograph. You don't always have to look for a photograph to apply this. You can actually get an interesting effect on something like text. Like here, I have the word speed. The stylized word speed, it's on its own layer. I'm going to load it as a selection. And just as we did with the runner, I'm going to make it a brush. Let's go into the edit menu, go to define brush preset. Could give it a name, but why? And then we'll deselect. Let's go and select the smudge tool as we did before. And of course, the runner is still selected from before. So let's go into that brush menu and select speed. There's our brush. I'm going to go ahead and leave the settings. You see, it's, actually, let's drop the strength to 50%. Go back in here. We want to make sure that all these are off. And of course, that spacing is unchecked. Close it out. Now, I'm going to work on a duplicate. I'm going to drag and create a duplicate of that text. I'm going to work on the one beneath it. So the one on top remains unaffected altogether. Now, unlike I did before, I'm going to hold down my shift key. I'm going to line up the brush over the letters and I'm just going to kind of do a zigzag back and forth. And by holding down that shift key, it will actually constrain my left to right movement. It won't let me go up and down. And varying the speed of how I zigzag will vary the effect that we get ultimately. So watch this. Let's just kind of click and drag back and forth here. That kind of gives me an interesting effect there. Now, you might be saying, why don't I just duplicate that layer and run a motion blur on it? Well, you could. And you might get a similar effect. But having it as a brush gives you more control. Like I said, varying the speed at which you paint gives you a different effect altogether. If I go a little bit faster, you can see that the letters are still somewhat legible, but they have kind of a sense of motion to them. And that's pretty cool. But that's pretty much it. That's taken the smudge tool and taking it a bit further and enhancing photographs and graphics with some interesting sense of motion. Speaking of motion,